I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is a PayPal request from an individual named DC, which I thank him for that. As I thank everyone who has either joined my Patreon or sent me requests via PayPal. Thank you so much for that. Again, the links are down below for those interested. Now, The Negotiator is a film from 1998 by F. Gary Gray. I mean, this is a guy that before this had done films like Friday, The First Friday, which is a fun movie. And then he would do films like The Italian Job, which is surprisingly decent, Law Abiding Citizen, which is an underrated one. And yes, he also directed Men in Black International, so they can't all be winners. <coughs> but this one. I mean, you have a really good cast, like Samuel L. Jackson is your star of the film. You also have Kevin Spacey. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, David Morse, who has been in a lot of stuff. He was... Uh, the movie that popped in my head was Disturbia, which he was in. Uh, Paul Giamatti has a supporting role in this. And a few other like recognizable faces you would see in the background in the supporting cast. Like I, I forget the actor's name, but he plays the other another hostage negotiator called Farley. I'm like, wait a minute, I recognize that guy. That's the guy who's one of the stars of that film Dolls from the 80s. He's like the, the grown-up guy, but he's got the heart of a kid in Dolls. That's, I rec yeah, I recognize him. <coughs> And of course, uh, J.T. Walsh. If you don't know who that is, he was a character actor who had been in quite a few stuff. If you see his face and hear his voice, you'll recognize him from a lot of movies from the 90s. And this was the last film he did because I think it, it did pass away before he came out because it's dedicated to him. Now the story is fairly simple. Sam Jackson is a hostage negotiator. We see him doing a job at the beginning of the film where he makes a plan to get this kid out so that the kid doesn't get killed. One thing leads to another after that successful negotiating sequence. A friend of his is killed, murdered, Someone's been stealing stuff from the police disability fund and Sam Jackson's character is framed for it. Framed for that and framed for the murder of his friend. So here he is losing all his stuff. Things been planted in his home. Evidence. Sam Jackson knows something is up so he decides to take J.T. Walsh who is the internal affairs agent and a few other people there including Paul Giamatti takes them hostage takes the room and says he's going he wants to speak to this guy named Fabian who is not part of his department but is a guy from a different department of course he realized later it's because he doesn't trust anyone in his unit because he knows there's some fishy things going on. There's some corruption going on. 
And that other hostage negotiator from the other pre-seat, whatever, is played by Kevin Spacey. <laughs> now, it's a bit hard to review this film because Kevin Spacey's in it. Because Kevin Spacey, you already know that he's a sick old fuck. <clears throat> Which is a shame. One, because of the what really happened. And then two, I'm like, man, I always liked him as an actor. I always thought he was, I always thought he was a good actor. Including here, I thought he gave a good performance. He did a solid job as the character. I liked him working with Sam Jackson. I liked that both characters... One wasn't made weaker than the other. They were both strong personalities. Had strong identities. It just sucks you know, to know who Kevin Spacey is as a piece of shit real life person person that he is so I mean that does bring up an uh, interesting conversation when you watch films like this can you <coughs> exit your mind from the real life person and concentrate just on the person as the character Oh, I don't know. Maybe it depends on the individual. Like Victor Salva and his Jeeper Creepers movies. The fact that Victor Salva himself not only is a pedophile, but he literally puts pedophile stuff in the movies. I mean, having a bunch of fucking guys with their shirts off, sunbathing on a fucking school bus, and the camera lingering on their bodies, like in Jeepers Creepers 2... Kind of hits the nose on the dick. You know what I mean? Here. You. You don't. You, you don't see any of that. Although once in a blue moon. There is a line that Kevin Spacey says. Like. I don't know. If I'm thinking that out of context, that doesn't work, but a one of a few lines. But again, that's not the movie's fault. I mean, the movie's a bit too long. It's like two hours and 20 minutes. The film does not need to be that long. Don't get me wrong, I, I wouldn't say I ever felt that bored. I just don't think it needs to be a two hour and 20 minute movie. But I mean, the story was interesting enough. Sam Jackson does a good job in his role. The other supporting characters, the actors did their jobs well too. The music was very appropriate for the film. Uh, Paul Giamatti, as one of the guys in the hostage, in the office being held hostage, he was fun. Uh, I thought he was entertaining with some of his dialogue. It was cool to see a negotiating movie, action film mix. Because you don't see that a lot. I mean, the only other film I can think of is Metro with Eddie Murphy, which I highly enjoy. And I reviewed on the channel when I did my Eddie Murphy marathon. Um, there's entertaining bits of showcasing these actors doing what they do best like when Sam Jackson fucks with the other hostage negotiator Farley and verbally tapes them down oh you want to talk me down okay fine talk me down try to talk me down wait wait you said no yeah remember Farley you never use no to a hostage taker you know what say no again okay if you say no idea, I'm going to shoot someone. And then says, so can I have a submachine gun? He's asking all these crazy things, trying to get the guy to say no. Because he's fucked with him. Mm. 
Have you cheated on your wife? Again, I'm just asking these crazy questions because the other guy can't say no. He's not supposed to say no. Then he accidentally does and you think he shoots someone, but of course he didn't. And then that's where like Paul Giamatti is, are you okay, Paul Giamatti gets the phone. Yeah, we're okay, just don't say no anymore, motherfucker. <laughs> so there's some fun bits of, uh, of humor and levity throughout the, the flick. And the movie's very stylish. I think that's one of the things that, that kept the movie not boring. It's a very stylish looking movie. F. Gary Gray definitely knows how to handle that, whether it be a law-abiding citizen or an Italian job or in this movie. Or even in the first Friday, I mean... You tell this is a good looking film that the budget was used effectively. Bray, it's not big action set pieces. If you're looking for that, you'd be disappointed. It's not. It's hard to call this an action movie. I mean, maybe you could, but that could be misleading as well. There's a little action beats a couple times when SWAT team type of folks try to get in and try to get Sam Jackson. And Sam Jackson's fighting off with these flashbangs. But really it's a decent enough story, an interesting enough setup, an intriguing setup. You know, what if a guy who's known for being a hostage negotiator, now he has to be the guy taking hostages? And how is he going to get out of the situation now that he's put himself in this one spot with all these guys watching him? And then how is him and this other hostage negotiator, Kevin Spacey, play off each other? <clears throat> and like I said, they do play off each other well. Like when they're talking about westerns and they're having a conversation about the movie Shane. I hate to tell you this, but Shane died. No, he didn't. And they're two great actors. I mean, Kevin Spacey, he is a great actor. It's just sad that... You know, you f find out what he is as a person. It, it, it does affect the film a little bit. So it does that does suck a little bit, but at the same time, I don't know. Maybe it just depends on certain movies, certain circumstances. I overcame and just watched it as a movie. And the sort of cat and mouse game of talk and tactics. That's really what it is. Until you get the finale, the the steep, and then. This is one of those movies I remember the trailer giving a lot of it away. The trailer, because if you watch the trailer, the trailer tells you pretty much the entire movie, including the fact that, well, these two guys are going to team up. Because the end of the trailer is literally the two of them looking at each other and Kevin Spacey going, now you have to deal with both of us. Which I don't think that line is in the movie. I remember it being in the trailer, but I don't think it's in the movie. Now you have to deal with both of us. If that's in the movie, I don't remember it. But it, yeah, that, that's how the trailer ends. It's like... So yeah, even back then, they gave away too much shit in trailers. And yeah, I don't really have much problems with the film. Other than it's running time. And two hours and 20 minutes is a bit over long. Uh, but with that said, I like I say, a stylish direction, intriguing enough story setup, uh, solid actors doing their jobs well, with a supporting cast that do their jobs well too. It's not a wall to wall action film. Don't. It's not a lot of action. And it's one of those movies that it was fun to rewatch again. It's entertaining. 
I think when it came out, it was a decent sized hit. Uh, but at the same time, no one ever talks about the movie, The Negotiator. I would say I would put Metro with Eddie Murphy above this if we're talking about movies about hostage negotiators, because Metro I thought was. It wasn't one wall action either, but it's actually set pieces are definitely more dynamic. And also the it's it's more of an action comedy while this is more of a thriller and maybe because I'm a sucker for action comedy more. Although I still find with a thriller of aspect like this. You know, satisfying enough ending. Again, what propels this film is the star power of its two leads, Sam Jackson and Kevin Spacey. If you don't want to watch it to Kevin Spacey, I can't blame you. I can't. I understand. But, you know, both actors do their jobs well. It pro they propel the movie. You know, make you interested to see what will happen next. David Morse's character is a bit too gun ho Especially when you realize that he's not part of the bad guys. And it's like, well, yeah, this guy's a bit too... You know, go for the throw, ready to kill. So I don't know about David Morse's character. He seems like the type of character that deserves a punch in the face at the end of the movie. That's just my opinion. But anyway, the, the negotiator, fun flick, you know, a good time, worth a watch for those interested. Uh, either way, thanks for watching. Take care. Thanks once again for the PayPal request and DC, and we will talk to you guys later. Bye bye.